a previous video, we found the potential along the axis of a charged ring. And now we want to find the electric field using that potential. So the electric field is given by the negative gradient of the potential. Okay, uh, we have to be a little careful about this. And so first of all, we recognize that by symmetry, there is only a Z component. If we write this out, we have the negative derivative of V uh, dx i hat minus uh, dv dy j hat minus dv dz k hat. And so the x and y components um, of the electric field depend on how the potential is changing in the x and y direction. And, and we never calculated that when, when we calculated this. We restricted ourselves entirely along the x-axis, so we really don't know uh, these terms. Uh, however, what we'll use, uh, what we used before, which is because of the symmetry, we know that all the x components of the electric field and the y components have to cancel along the axis so that we know uh, by symmetry, symmetry, <laughs> symmetry considerations those terms are zero. So we're left with just the dv dz um, along the z axis. Okay, so uh, we can go ahead and compute that derivative, dv dz, which is straightforward enough. So we have a negative sign to this negative sign to start with, and then uh, this is a squared to the z squared to the negative one half power. So that brings down a negative one half factor. We still have k, q, which are constants, and now the a squared uh, plus z squared goes from negative one half to negative three halves, or divided by three halves. And then now chain rule, we differentiate the inside, that gives us two times z, and then we add our k hat. So here's the negative, here's the k hat, and here is dv dz. And so if we uh, simplify all that, put that together, just simplify our terms, uh, these cancel, twos cancel, and we get kqz over uh, a squared plus z squared to the three halves k hat. And that's our answer, which was uh, considerably simpler than just trying to integrate the electric field directly. Uh, it's interesting, just to take a moment, what is, this, what is this doing, really? I mean, so let's do a graphical representation uh, of the electric field along the x-axis. And so, um, so we have here, so the z-axis, sorry. Okay, so at e is equal to uh, zero, the field is zero, right? Let's see, where is that? Because that's right here. If, if I plug in z is equal to zero, th there's a zero term right here, so e is zero. So as z increases, then uh, this becomes non-zero and, and it increases. But then eventually, this term right here, the denominator goes as, uh, a, there's a sort of a z cubed term in here. And so eventually, this then turns over and dies away. And so right at the center, here the field is zero, and we can see that because all of the components are, are pointing opposite, so they all cancel. So as you move away, you start to increase your field as you start to gain components uh, that non-zero com non-zero components along the z-axis, right? On the axis, there are no z components to the field, so you just have x and y, so everything cancels. So as you move away from the uh, origin, you start getting z components of the field, and so those z components add to give you a net electric field in the z direction. But then as you move far away, of course, the, the fact that the field dies off as a function of position, eventually it goes to zero.